Welcome back to News Now on PNC. Governor Eddie Calvo has sent over his budget request to the Guam legislature over the weekend. The governor says he and his fiscal team believe that the overall outlook on Guam's economy is good, which is why revenue projections for fiscal year 2016 are 8.6% higher than in FY 2015. The governor is expecting GovGuam to collect $851.7 million in revenues for fiscal year 2016. It's not one category or the other, right? I think it's pretty been, it's been pretty broad-based. Yes, uh, when you take a look at the business privilege tax, it's been very, very strong increases. Uh, withholding taxes, strong. Uh, your corporate income tax, strong. And the governor says hotel occupancy taxes have increased by double digits. So with the governor's spending request, right off the bat, $125 million has been set aside for tax refunds. $50 million of this is for earned income tax credits, which is an unfunded federal mandate. Nevertheless, the governor says there is enough money to increase funding to things like the hospital. We're looking at uh, more than doubling uh, of appropriations uh, to support the hospital, uh, and that comes from the pharmaceutical fund. Uh, which is the majority of the subsidy, and then a couple of million dollars more from the general fund. For public safety, there is an additional funding to hire more police officers and customs officers. The governor says the budget even gives money to DPW to begin repairing village streets or secondary and tertiary roads. As you all know, in this previous budget, we uh, had uh, appropriated sums for road paving equipment. That is right now in the uh, uh, procurement phase at this point. Uh, this upcoming budget will have two million dollars specifically in acquisition of asphalt and that will for repair work in many of our village streets. The governor wants to make this a normal appropriation in the years ahead so that they can take advantage of the talent of DPW to begin paving village roads. The budget even appropriates half a million dollars for biosecurity to hire people at the Department of Agriculture to fight off invasive species. Well, it is tax season and residents are busy preparing their paperwork and there are already long lines at the Department of Revenue and Taxation. PNC's Rizal Romanis talked with Revenue Tax Director John Camacho this morning and tells us what to expect. Have you filed your taxes yet? Revenue Tax Director Don Camacho advises to get them in early. Camacho tells PNC that as of earlier today, 5,500 residents already filed their taxes. If you're ready, basically you're, you're, you have your complete uh, income and your deductions, uh, have it prepared or, or prepared to bring it in. Uh, as we know, we, we actually refund uh, refunds based on first in, first out. So that's. That's, uh, that's uh, something that we've been doing for the last two years. He says February is usually the busiest month. In fact, he says they were short on forms and instruction handouts sometime last week. Camacho says there was also a little delay this year because the current IRS forms have sections that do not apply to Guam. I guess for the last week and, and, and uh, you know, this year, uh, they were not available because they weren't ready, in other words. But now we, we, have, we have them ready uh, and people are now uh, picking up forms. Camacho reminds residents that the deadline to file is April 15. PNC asks Camacho when residents can expect the first round of refunds to be paid out. DOA is putting, putting aside funds and, uh, uh, you know, last year I think we, we, we started as early as I think February or March. So hopefully we can start this year again early. We caught up with Charita Mahilam who just filed her taxes. I'm just excited to receive my refund at, at the earliest as possible. Okay, and yeah. what is your suggestion to those that like to file late? Oh, to file early so you can get your refund early. Rasal Romanes, PNC News. In other news, some school kids enjoyed their day off on this Super Bowl Monday while principals and teachers worked hard for, for Professional Development Day. Most Department of Education schools conducted workshops on their own, but six middle schools decided to collaborate. PNC's Brazil Romanes has more in this report. There was a big gathering at Astumbo Middle School earlier today, and it's not because of the Super Bowl. Six public middle schools worked together for their Professional Development Day with Empowering Teachers Through Collaboration 2015. We have many great teachers in each school doing many great things, but now what we want to do is bring that out in the open. 
um, to state, hey, at Jose Rios, at Antolan, at Ogda, at Astumbo, FB, and Beneventi, here's what we're doing, here's how we're helping our students succeed, how can we all support you. Here at Astumbo Middle School, principals, teachers, and staff believe that the power of collaboration leads to student success. They participated in team building activities, exchanged notes, and came up with ways to improve student learning in the classroom. And what I saw was absolutely awesome. Teachers were engaged. I saw everybody was focused on the activities and certainly enjoying what they were doing and what they were participating in today. The teachers weren't the only ones working together for a purpose, but the support personnel were involved as well. The group was trained in active supervision and incident command procedures. The principals tell PNC this workshop is only the beginning of the joint effort. We are looking forward to three, four years of this continuous collaboration between and amongst our teachers so that the transition from one school to another school and also the transition from one grade level to the next is very seamless and that again is in concert with our um, district goals. Rosal Romanes, PNC News. All right, and speaking of middle school, Joanna O oh is standing by with weather. Monday, start of the week, and today is February 2nd, the 2 2 day. Actually, 2 2 day in Korea is meant for couples. I think it was elementary thing. So, back in the days, if you get girlfriend or boyfriend on 22nd day after the anniversary, you would celebrate this 2 2 day by asking people for 22 cents. <laughs> 22 cents. Anyways, welcome to PNC's weather forecast on this 2 2 day. I'm Jonah O. Last week was pretty dry, but this week might not be because we're now looking at approaching weather makers such as shear line and low level clouds called strata cumulus. Sounds smart, huh? <laughs> However, in the US predicts chance of rain to remain 20% as of now, and that is why we're looking at mostly cloudy with isolated showers today. I mean, tonight, and partly cloudy with isolated showers on next two days. Winds will blow towards northeast with speed of up to 20 tonight, but 25 on next two days. Notice how winds are blowing pretty hard? For those days, watch out for breeziness and marine advisories. Temperatures will vary, but it will definitely be around mid-70s and upper 80s. Alright, that's it for me, but stay tuned for more on sports with Mr. Watson.